I'll read out the question and then you just you a clap on read it back to us before you answer. Our triptych is called strange loops. So what makes a loop strange? Well, a loop clearly joins back to the beginning again, but a strange loop is one where there seems to be a climbing hierarchy. Things seem to climb higher and higher until suddenly you find yourself back right where you started. I think my favorite example of a strange loop is that classic picture of Escher's where people seem to be climbing a staircase and they're climbing higher and higher, but suddenly the staircase doubles back on itself and they're right back where they started. In Douglas's book, he references Escher as um, a visual representation of the concept of a strange loop. What I'm trying to do in my work is to add a time element to that so that you can experience in the Barbican uh, the, the transformation actually take place and to create feedback loops within the space so that you can actually uh, kind of enter, enter the work and experience it from a new perspective. I make music with algorithms and machine learning and sometimes it's interactive. So I think the area which I'm most interested in with Strange Loops is how if you make a piece of music which is intelligence, an intelligent system, and you're listening to it and you're reacting to it and maybe it's reacting to you, that creates this kind of feedback loop, which is this very sort of strange perceptual experience. Strange loops are really important to me as a mathematician because Kurt Gödel, an Austrian logician, used them to prove that mathematics has limitations. There are true statements about mathematics which can't be proved true within a system of mathematics. Mathematics and music have always had some sort of eternal connection. The notes we find harmonic have some mathematical relationship. Uh, rhythm is all about number. But actually, I think it's the structure of a piece which actually has a mathematical shape to it. Um, and that's why someone like Bach is using ideas of symmetry and little algorithms to create his work. Imagine we broaden that question to saying how a sound and mathematics linked. And I think uh, there's so many parallels between the two. Um, the obvious one perhaps being uh, the patterns that exist in parallels. I think one of the most important things about music, uh, which might be very difficult to describe mathematically, is how we perceive it and how we listen to it. And then what that is, what that changes over time in relation to the work. So I think that's a very big part of what a piece of music actually is. Didn't that happen ages ago? There's definitely a certain percentage of anyone's practice that could be replaced by machines, but there's something about intuition and inference which will be very, very hard to replace. I'm going to say no, but um, that I think at some point machines will make great art for other machines. And I think that um, humans will like quite a lot of that, um, but really the the things that will like it the most will be machines. Um, the reason I say that is that to make human art, um, human art comes from human perception. So in order to, uh, to be able to make human art, you need to perceive the world as a human being. Um, so we already know how to make human beings. Computers, AI, machine learning is becoming so sophisticated, it's almost developing its own kind of intuition. And we're beginning to see many interesting examples of music, art, poetry, literature, even maybe mathematics, which is being created by machines. I still think there's a long way to go before they can really challenge the great artists, but it certainly is an exciting time. As technology develops faster and faster, um, I certainly have a sense that we live in an increasingly complex world and um, I think the arts actually is going to be very important as a, as a tool to help us understand that changing world that we're living in. Art will always be something where we use tools and really just the latest set of tools that we're developing are intelligent. Um, we've been using um, these kind of machine learning and very intelligent algorithmic processes for a long time but now we're kind of consciously thinking about them as that um, i think you know as we start to um, use them more extensively they'll just become part of our creative process
I think the future for technology and the arts is that technology is going to help us to explore areas of our creative world that we don't realize are out there. I think we're a little bit like uh, in being in some huge, great big room, but quite often we're just stuck in one corner and we don't realize how much else is out there. And the machine is going to help to be like a torch to shine on our own creative process. I think sometimes we behave too much like machines, and the machines are going to help us behave more like humans.